Hello, this is Robert Wolfer. And in this episode of Get to Know Your System, we want to examine the network capabilities of the system you are currently on. Yeah? And to be honest, this lesson is a tough one if you aren't a guy who configures networks every day. Yeah? And therefore, I try to keep it as simple as possible. What will you learn? Yeah, first, and obviously, we want to see if and how many network interfaces the system has and how they are configured with IP settings. And then we want to check if there are some network ports open on the system. And we want to know which services or which processes are listening on these ports. And finally, we want to check the firewall settings. If a service is running, that opened the port, but you cannot connect externally to this port, then chances are high that there is a local firewall active on a system that needs to be modified to publish the needed service. Yeah. But before diving in, if you want to know more about such tools, like the ones we talk about here, have a look at my new book, The Shell Toolbox. In this book, I give you all the tools you need for your day-to-day -day work at the Linux command line everything with explanations and examples. Yeah. You can find it at shelltoolbox.com. So this is one single word, yeah, shelltoolbox and then .com, shelltoolbox.com. Okay, so let's start. We are logged in into a system and we want to know how the network configuration of this system looks like. And if we have logged in via SSH or PuTTY, yeah, then we already know that there is a working network configuration in place. Yeah? But let's examine this a little bit further. The first and I think the shortest command you can use to get a first view on the network configuration, this is the command IP space A. Yeah? This is the command IP with the letter A as one single parameter. This command shows you the current IP configuration of your system, or to be more exact, the IP configuration of the installed network interfaces. IPA is an abbreviation, the abbreviation for IP address show. Yeah? The command IP is the perfect command for the lazy ones of us. Yeah? As long as it is obvious what you want to accomplish with a given parameter, you can shorten them. For instance, IP address show is the correct command line for listing the IP configuration. Yeah? IP address show, three words. Yeah? But you can omit the last show parameter, the last word, yeah? as this is the default command for the IP address command. Yeah? And the phrase address can be shortened as long as it uniquely matches the parameter address. And because address is the only first parameter for IP that starts with an A, you could write IP ADDR, for instance, or even IPA. And the IP command exactly knows what you want to see. Yeah? Okay. So IPA shows you the current IP configuration. It shows you the IP configuration for all available network interfaces. Each interface block starts with a simple ID, a plain number followed by a column. After that, you'll see the interface name. Typical names you'll see for network interfaces are, for instance, ETH0 for the first real interface or LO for the loopback interface. The loopback interface LO is used only by the system to communicate with itself and it is therefore irrelevant for all external communications. Yeah. The name ETH0 is the historical name for the first of all the external interfaces or ports yeah, of the system. The second port or the second interface would be named ETH1, the third ETH2 and so on. On modern systems, you will often see interface names not starting with ETH, yeah, which by the way is an abbreviation for Ethernet. Yeah. Be prepared to see names like ENS32 or ENPOS3. These interface names are given by the kernel and 
these names are better suited to keep the names consistent on modern systems across reboots and reconfigurations. Sometimes the IP8 tool appends in its output an add sign to the interface name, followed by some sort of secondary interface name. Yeah. Uh, for the purpose of this lesson, ignore everything beginning with the add sign. Yeah, if your IP8 command prints out these extensions. The interface name is the name without the possible printed extension. If the interface the IP command shows you has an active IP configuration, then this configuration is shown within the following lines, starting with INET or INET6. Yeah, the INET lines show you the IP version 5 addresses, the INET6 lines, if present, the IP version 6 configuration of the interface. Okay, so now we know the IP address of the interfaces our system has. But how about the gateway? This is shown in the routing table and this is reachable via IPR or IP root. Here again, we can use the abbreviation R for the root subcommand. Yeah. IPR gives you the complete routing table of the system. You'll see as a minimum one single route for each configured network interface. And if your system is configured with a default gateway, then you'll see the address of this gateway within the line starting with the phrase default. Okay, do we now have everything at hand for the network configuration of the system? No, one single piece is missing information about the name service, the DNS service, yeah? the information about the name service our system uses. This information is located in a file, in the file slash etc slash resolve.conf. But pay attention, the verb resolve in the name of resolve.conf is written without the trailing e. Yeah? It is only resolv.conf. This file etcresolve.conf may contain lines starting with the phrase name server. And these lines, hello Captain Obvious, these lines contain the IP address of the used name service. Great, so we know the IP configuration, we know the gateway and we know the DNS service used by the system. Bonus question, is this seen network configuration. Is this statically? Is it somewhere configured directly in configuration files on a system? Or is this system configured dynamically via DHCP every time it boots up? The answer to this question can be most of the time given with a look into the process table. The dynamic configuration via DHCP the dynamic host configuration protocol needs a service or process that is running all the time. And the process you will typically see will have a name like dhclient or dhclient3 or dhcpcd. And all these mentioned process names start with the letters d, h and c. And so we can use the grep command to do a quick search with an output of the ps command. Yeah? So use psax to print out all running processes and pipe this output to grab dhc to see only lines containing these letters in the given order. Yeah? And a quick glance at this output will show you if there is some sort of dhcp client running or not. Okay, so now we know the IP configuration, the routing and the used DNS service. But if your system acts as a server, then you surely want to know which network ports on your system are reachable via the network and which services or processes are listening on these ports. To get this information, use the netstat command. Together with the command line switches dash n, dash l, dash t, dash u and dash p, it will give you all the needed information. Yes, these are a lot of command line options, but if you once know their meaning, they are really easy to remember. Yeah? Dash n 
stands for numeric output. No resolving of IP addresses to names or ports to service names. Yeah, dash N stands for numeric output. Dash L stands for listening. With this parameter, Netstat shows only the ports that are opened in listening mode and are therefore waiting for connections. Yeah? Dash L stands for listening. Dash T stands for TCP and dash U stands for UDP. And I think typically you want to know all open ports. Yeah, no matter if TCP or UDP, so always append dash T and dash U for TCP and UDP. And last, the switch dash P. Dash P stands for processes. With this option, Netstat gives you, but only if you run Netstat as the root user, yeah, then it gives you the processes that are listening on the open ports. Yeah, so to summarize, we have dash N for numeric output, dash L for listening, dash T and dash U for TCP and UDP, and finally dash P for listing also the corresponding processes. And like with many other commands, these command line switches can be written together as one single parameter. Yeah? They can be written as dash NLTUP. Yeah. So next time you want to see the open ports and the listening processes on a system, use netstat with the parameter NLTUP and you get the information you want. Yeah, for instance, on a typical web server, you will see open ports 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS connections that are opened by a web server software, yeah, for instance, Apache or Nginx or Squid, just to name a few. If your system is providing network services, the processes are running and the ports are open, then the system should simply be reachable on these ports via the network. Yeah, a web server, for instance, if it has the HTTP or HTTPS ports opened, should be simply reachable via a browser. If you have issues connecting to a service via the network, then perhaps a local firewall on the server is blocking the connections. A quick overview about an active firewall in your system can be given by the IP table save command. This is IP tables dash save without any space in between. IP tables dash save as one single standalone command. Yeah. This command lists you all active packet filtering rules if there are any implemented. Yeah. Do not forget to run this command as the root user or it will always give you an empty output without any warning. Yeah. And an empty output of IP table safe means that there are no filtering rules in place and therefore all listening ports should be reachable on the system. If IP table safe gives you an output, then things can become complicated yeah, because then you have to interpret the listed rules. Yeah, but this is definitively out of scope for this lesson here. Your simple takeaway here should be if the output of IP table safe is empty, then there isn't a local firewall active on the system and therefore this local firewall can be removed as the source for possible problems. Yeah. And now, before leaving this lesson, if you want to know more about such tools like the ones we talk about here, have a look at my new book, The Shell Toolbox. In this book, I give you all the tools you need for your day-to-day -day work at the Linux command line everything with explanations and with examples. Yeah. You can find it at shelltoolbox.com. So this is shell toolbox as one single word, shelltoolbox.com. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and, and learned something useful about the network configuration of Linux systems. Yeah. I'm Robert Wolfhardt. Thanks for being with me for the last minutes. See you next time.